to every survivor of sexual assault, you have the right to be heard. You have the right to be believed. We're with you. Hillary Clinton, September 14th, 2015. Now, I'm not asking you to assess the merits of this claim today. Personally, I think it's a very worrisome claim that would overthrow the very foundations of Western jurisprudence if it were taken straightforwardly and literally, i.e. if every accuser was believed, had the right to be believed, of course, they would overthrow the very foundation of Western jurisprudence, namely the right to be pro innocent until proven guilty. But regardless of that, today, let's just assess if Hillary Clinton herself really believes this claim, or if she is just saying it in order to garner votes from a constituency that she think will, thinks will be politically advantageous to her in the 2016 election. Say that all rape victims should be believed, but would you say that about Johnny to Broderick, Kathleen Wiley, and or Paula Jones? Should we believe them as well? Well, I would say that everybody should be believed at first until they are disbelieved based on evidence. Big smile, big applause. Everyone should be believed at first until they are disbelieved based on evidence. Hillary Clinton, November 2015. Well, that doesn't sound quite as good on the tweet, doesn't, does it? And probably wouldn't garner quite as much love from Twitter. But still, well, it is a statement. Uh, so everyone should be believed until they are disbelieved based on evidence. Hmm, I, again, I wonder if this is the principle that she really stands by in things like the case of Juanita Broderick or Kathleen Wiley or Paula Jones, etc. Well, what is she talking about here? Oh, yes, if you remember going, casting your mind back to my Google Bill Clinton rape video from earlier this year, I went through uh, Eileen Wellstone and Juanita Broderick and Paula Jones and the, and the multiple, uh, a dozen or so women that we know of by name who have come out in the past to accuse Bill Clinton of rape uh, and who, who not only themselves but witnesses and other people who can uh, attest to what happened. And yet, not only is that completely ignored by the media and, and swept under the rug, but of course, no, these women were not given the uh, pr presumption of being right about their claims until they were proven wrong uh, in nothing of the sort. Again, if you go through the Google Bill Clinton rape video, you can see the evidence, uh, the massive amounts of evidence that there are on Bill Cosby, uh, sorry, Bill Clinton. Hey, slip of the tongue. Of course, this does go back to the idea of, well, if we can accuse Bill of, uh, well, if Bill is multiply accused of rape by many, many women who are all sharing basically the same story and it has ruined Bill Cosby's career, hmm, but Bill Clinton seems to still be revered as the greatest president since sliced bread by certain people on the left. Very strange, very hypocritical, and seemingly hip hypocritical of Hillary. Well, let's explore this a little bit further, because when Juanita Broderick, one of the women uh, who Bill Clinton raped, uh, came out uh, uh, earlier this month to talk about how incensed she was about Hillary Clinton's every survivor has the right to be heard and believed rhetoric, she revealed more details about how Hillary Clinton herself was the one smoothing over Bill Clinton's rapes. Well, Chuck came over to me, the one had driven him from the airport, and said, well, the whole conversation was about you coming from the airport, mostly from Mrs. Clinton. Hmm. And so then, about that time, I see them coming through the kitchen area, and some people there are pointing to me. Uh, he goes one direction, and she comes directly to me. And uh, uh, then panic sort of just started to set in with me I thought oh my god what do I do now so she came over to me and said it's so nice to meet you and all of the niceties that she was trying to say at the time and said I just want you to know how much we that Bill and I appreciate the things you do for him and uh, I just stood there Aaron I, I, I was sort of not you might say shell-shocked and uh, she said, do you understand everything you do? Hmm. And tried to take a hold of my hand, and I, I left. I told the girls, I said, I can't take this. I'm, I'm leaving. So I immediately left. So you took that as I would, too, if I were in your situation. You took that as, I don't know, uh, a much. threat almost, intimidating or what? Or just thanking you for your silence? Or, or yeah, both? No, what, what really went through my mind at that time is, she knows. She knew. 
she knew she's covering it up, and she expects me to do the very same thing. All right, you can go and listen to that full interview. Of course, the link will be in the show notes. But there, again, Juanita Broderick, well, she has the right to be heard and believed until disbelieved on the basis of evidence. And, well, uh, again, uh, there's a lot to go through there, and I'll, of course, exhort you to look at the Google Bill Clinton rape video to see what the evidence is for yourself. But let's take a look at some other troubling aspects of Hillary Clinton's relationship to rape, including the Hillary tapes that were released last year. Newly discovered audio recordings of Hillary Clinton from the early 1980s include the former First Lady's frank and detailed assessment of the most significant criminal case of her legal career, defending a man accused of raping a 12-year-old girl. In 1975, the same year she married Bill, Hillary Clinton agreed to serve as the court-appointed attorney for Thomas Alfred Taylor, a 41-year-old accused of raping the child after luring her into a car. The recordings, which date from 1983 to 1987 and have never been reported, include Clinton's suggestion that she knew Taylor was guilty at the time. And I will just parenthetically note here that when you go and listen to these tapes, which you should for yourself, uh, it isn't just that she suggested that he was uh, uh, that he was guilty. It was that he she all but outright stated it. All this stuff. He took a lot of tests. I had to apologize. Yes, so she absolutely believed him 100% to be guilty, and yet laughed about him passing the polygraph, and laughed about the ultimate uh, result of the case, where he ended up getting off with uh, two months and time served. Uh, And it's not just that, of course, although that is obviously problematic enough to use a term, but uh, also the way that she went about trying to discredit the 12-year-old rape victim by calling her a slut, more or less. In a July 28, 1978, uh, 1975 court affidavit, Clinton wrote that she had been informed the young girl was emotionally unstable and had a tendency to seek out older men and engage in fantasizing. I have also been told by an expert in child psychology psychology, that children in early adolescence tend to exaggerate or romanticize sexual experiences, and that adolescents in disorganized families, such as the complainants, are even more prone to exaggerated behavior, Clinton said. Clinton said the child had, in the past, made false accusations about persons, claiming they had attacked her body, and that the girl exhibits an unusual stubbornness and temper when she does not get her way. Every survivor of sexual assault has the right to be heard and the right to be believed. Right, Hillary? Well, what about this sexual assault survivor? Specifically, uh, this 12-year-old, who is now 53 years old, was tracked down by the Daily Beast last year, who uh, published an interview with her, where they revealed these Hillary Clinton tapes to her and got her response. And, well, obviously, the 53-year-old now, 12-year-old girl at the time, felt uh, completely 100% uh, betrayed and disgusted by Hillary Clinton's actions. Hillary Clinton took me through hell. Uh, I would say to Clinton, you took a case of mine in 75. You lied on me. I realize the truth now, the heart of what you've done to me, and you are supposed to be for women. You call that being for women what you've done to me, and I hear you on tape laughing. Uh, and responding specifically to the, uh, the accusation that the complainant is emotionally unstable with a tendency to seek out older men and engage in fantasizing, she uh, specifically denies that. I've never said that about anyone. I don't know why she said that. I've never made false ac- accusation allegations. I know she was lying. I definitely didn't see older men. I don't know why Hillary put that in there, and it makes me plumb mad. Every survivor of sexual assault has the right to be heard and the right to be believed. Right, Hillary? Well, again, actually, it's not only the victim herself who's saying this, although she was saying that and is saying that, but also the investigators in the case confirmed that she had not made false allegations in the past. So Hillary just completely made that up in order to smear the reputation of this 12-year-old girl who she knew to have been raped by this man that she was defending. Again, uh, say what you will about defense lawyers, but For someone who's running as president of the United States on slogans like this to be engaged in activities like this is problematic, again, to use that word, enough. And uh, again, I will exhort you to go and listen to the tapes for yourself so you can actually hear what she was talking about. But it's not just 
the covering up of Bill Clinton's rapes or the covering up of various other people's rapes in the course of her duties as a defense attorney. But also, of course, little niggling details like uh, the, uh, the fact that Bill Clinton was one of the VIP pedophile friends of mega pedophile Jeffrey Pe- Epstein. Uh, I'll throw in a link about that in the show notes. Also, there was a good podcast um, by uh, Pierce Redmond of Porkins Policy Review. Um, about the, the the Epstein case that I'll throw in the show notes as well, so you can explore that. Uh, many other aspects of this that deserve to be looked at, but again, the fundamental issue, does Hillary Clinton really believe that every survivor of sexual assault has the right to be heard and the right to be believed, or is this just political rhetoric that she's trying to use to win over a certain political base? Again, ultimately, I'll leave you to decide that, but I think we all know what the real answer to that is. And if you do know what the real answer to that is, I will leave you with the same exhortation that I left you with at the end of my Google Bill Clinton rape video. No, it was Hannibal Buress getting on stage saying Google Bill Cosby rape and going viral with that, that suddenly it became a meme. And now when you Google Bill Cosby rape, you will see no end to the various permutations of the memes trying to bring this, these accusations to your attention. Can you imagine if we did a similar thing with Bill Clinton rape? Now, I would never tell people to actually use NSA adjunct privacy invading Google for any of their searching. I would say startpage.com and search for Bill Clinton rape. But you get the idea. Just do it. Search Bill Clinton rape. Make this go viral. We need to get Bill Clinton out of politics for good. Not, well, not only Bill, but also Hillary. So you know the deal. You know the score. Search Hillary Clinton rape. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.